So uh, what I want to say in these 15 minutes is uh, what is the strength of a polynomial? What are some things we know about it? And what are the many things that I would like to know about it? Um, so first, here is a thing that you could do. Uh, you could take a vector space and then uh, try to define a rank function on this vector space by taking any subset, any subset x. And then you say, well, the rank of uh, the zero elements is going to be zero. Uh, all other elements in x are going to have rank one. And then uh, more generally, uh, the rank is going to be r. If you can write f, uh, your element f as a sum of r elements in x that are minimal. And if you cannot do that at all, you say the rank is infinite. Now, if you do this, then you will not always get something interesting, but sometimes you do. For example, if you start with uh, matrices of the field K, <coughs> the X is the set of rank one matrices, then the rank that you get is just a normal matrix rank. Uh, for example, if you take tensors, then X is again uh, kind of like, or like tautologically, the set of uh, elements of rank one, you get tensor rank. Uh, and for example, here you have this example uh, where you have infinite by infinite matrices. And they again say X is everything at rank one. And then here you actually do get some, some things that have infinite rank. You can try to study those. Some other point is that you get the interesting notion of rank. If you take X to be a set of elements, you consider it simple. Uh, so what do I want to look at? I want to look at uh, the space of polynomials, homogeneous of degree D. And now what are the elements that are simple? Well, those are the polynomials that are reducible. So that's going to be the definition of strength. So that's our rank function. The strength of polynomial F is the minimal number R, such you can write F as a sum of R products of low degree polynomials. Now here an example, f is x squared plus y squared plus z, uh, z squared, what is the strength? Well, first some trivial observations. Well, f you can write as a sum of three products, so the strength is at most three. Uh, f is not zero, strength is not zero. f is not reducible, strength is not one. So the answer is going to be two or three. And that was the answer. Well, actually it's a trick question. Uh, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. So over the complex numbers, uh, you notice that x squared plus y squared is reducible. So then you get uh, strength two. But over, for example, the real numbers, you cannot do such a thing. And indeed, the strength is going to be three. And now here's one of my questions. Uh, if I give you a polynomial, can you compute its strength? I don't know how to do this. Uh, or maybe a bit easier, can you give me some good lower bounds? Can you prove me? Uh, if I give you a polynomial, can you make it tell me uh, the strength is at least number of variables times three fourths or something? Um, so why should you care? Well, um, the strength was first defined in a paper proving Stillman's conjecture, which is kind of famous. So that's already a reason. Uh, it already existed before actually and was known as Smith rank, but uh, I like to call it strength. Um, let me actually also give an actual reason. So if you have a polynomial in variables uh, x1 to xn, and then you take n linear forms, l1 to ln in maybe some different variables, then you can uh, replace xi by li to get a polynomial of the same degree in the new variables, and then call such a thing important transformation of f. Now, if uh, l1 to ln are linear independent, then actually what you're doing is you're just taking the same polynomial, but writing it in some other way. So if you're starting to look at properties of polynomials, so property is something a polynomial either can have or not have, and you look at the interesting ones, so the one where if a polynomial F has a property, then also all current transformations, then it's a theorem that uh, one of two things happen. One example of a property is just the property that all pro polynomials have. Uh, but if you don't have this example, then it turns out that there exists a K such that all polynomials with the property have strength of most K. So you should think of this is um, if you have a property that's not trivial, 
that means that all polynomials that have this property should be pretty easy. And um, the reason that this should be impressive is that I never told you how many variables there are. Um, if a polynomial has 10 variables and it's 10 at most 10, it's not very impressive. But if it has a million variables and you can still conclude all the strengths is at most 10, then it really is saying something. <coughs> now, uh, what I do is algebraic geometry. Uh, so, and for example, uh, for the rank of matrices, it's very nice that if you take a limit of, mat of uh, matrices of rank at most k, then uh, the limit again has a rank at most k. So first question could be, if you take, uh, if you do the same thing for strength, is this still true? So is the set of strength at most k elements seriously closed? Now you start with easy cases, case one, case two, or degree is low, d is two, d is three. Um, for case one is true, for low degree is also true. For case two, <laughs> actually I really do not know. But um, if you go to the first degree, where we, where we don't know, degree four, and strength at most three, then it is not true. Uh, for many variables. And actually, I do not know how many. And I also do not know a counterexample. But I have a list, an infinite list of polynomials. And if you go far enough, my counterexample is in there. So how do I get this? Well, I have this, this very difficult line. Do not read this, but you should notice that it is a sum of three reducible things. Now, uh, here I have a t. I let t go to zero to get this thing. It looks a bit better. So this thing is going to be a limit of a strength at most three polynomials. So I get x squared f plus y squared g plus u squared v plus v squared q. Uh, x, y, u, and v are variables. Uh, f, g, p, and q are polynomials of degree two. And the way we prove this theorem is by proving that if you have enough variables, then you can choose f, g, p, and q in such a way that this thing actually has time for. Um, so here are some more questions. So can someone give me an explicit example where this works? Or maybe a bound, say it works for n at least a million or even like something that should be easy. But if for my degree two, two polynomials, I just each polynomial take one variable and just say, well, it's, it's a very easy thing. F is A squared, G is B squared, etc. cetera. Does this, this thing, degree four polynomial, eight variables, does this have strength for? And I, I do not know. Um, then uh, next, what, what happens if you take a generic polynomial? Uh, what is going to be the strength? So what's our range of, of things that can happen? Um, so if you take uh, the degree at least three and you take R minimal such that this inequality holds. So if you don't see what, what that means, that means that R is about, about N, a bit smaller. And how much smaller? Well, about the D minus first root of D factorial times N. So if you take this R, then uh, it is true that a generic polynomial, and in fact, any polynomial can be written as a sum of R products, uh, but even uh, the stronger fact that in each of these products, you can assume that one of the factors is linear. And now uh, you can see, try to see what happens if you try to improve this a bit. What happens if you try to reduce R? Can you still do it then? What happens if you relax the condition that all the Li are linear? Maybe you allow also different combinations of degrees. And then uh, it holds that it doesn't work. Then a generic thing cannot be written in this form anymore. So uh, here's some more questions. So now we know that a generic strength is, is this number. Uh, how do you find, again, how strength polynomials? Um, the best thing. So it's pretty easy to see that if you take a polynomial, such so that it defines a, a projective hypersurface that is smooth, then you get number of variables divided by two. Uh, current world record is uh, one higher, so n divided by two plus one. Um, can, can you do something better? Even plus two would be a, a new thing. And maybe one way to do that, that I would like, uh, as someone who does algebraic geometry, 
if you look at uh, the set of uh, elements with strength at most k, with k smaller than this number, then uh, this has some co-dimension. So there are some equations vanishing on this set. Can you tell me one of these equations? This one is already new. Uh, and then I really want to end with some more questions. So maybe you cannot compute the strength, but maybe some <coughs> uh, can you do that? And um, well, I, I told you there's one example of uh, a sequence of polynomials of strength of most three and the limit is going to be four. In general, with, with a bound K, if you take a limit, how big can the jump be? For any specific K, this jump is going to be finite, but, but how big? Yeah, so I want to say, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, questions? You can wonder anything if instead of reducible one, consider product of linear forms. Um, so if you so what people study is varying rank, which is what you get if you take powers of linear forms. Mm -hmm. um, that is studied quite a lot. And there are like these questions of like uh, finding things of high strength or, or high varying rank are also very much open. People call that finding hay in a haystack, and it's very hard. Um, products of different linear forms, I'm not sure if people have looked at this, but, but somehow uh, trying to do the, the tensor rank thing of like the simple things are things really the sky one degree one, that just sounds interesting. Um, what happens with that Zariski closing the statement uh, in Garrison P? Um, I do not know. So um, basically, for uh, this case, where all the factors, have, uh, all the things have a linear factor, uh, you get slice rank. There, are people have already looked at it quite a bit, and I think um, there was quite to get these results of like what is the generic rank was quite hard, and I think it's only in characteristic zero. Like I don't really understand that proof, so I don't really know what happens in characteristic B, unfortunately. So is this connected also with the vector, right? You take your vector, some tensor power of a vector space, and you take an element there, and then you define the vector rank of that vector to be the smallest V1 tensor, V2 tensor, let's say, V tensor N, so V1 tensor Vn, sum over some things, and the smallest number where you can represent that vector, so that's called the vector rank. And I think in the geometric complexity theory, there's a very important invariant associated with that. So that's Schmidt, Schmidt rank. Yeah, Schmidt rank. Oh, is it called Schmidt rank? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's exactly this. So I think rank is another name, Schmidt rank. So maybe we're talking about the same thing. Okay, okay. I see. So. So for example, there is this question, that if you take the matrix multiplication, mm -hmm. right? So that gives you a vector. Okay. And that gives you a vector and you want to calculate what is the, 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 the rank, rank or for the rank. Yes, yes that's right. Um, so does your theory somehow have some, some, uh, some insight to offer there? So, I mean, I guess what I'm looking at is symmetric tensors. Um, so, so, I mean, my hope would be that like, if you look at tensors in general, you have all these different zero functors, maybe it's diff difficult, but here you have just one zero functor. So maybe if you can do this case, you can also do the general case for okay. some intuition. Uh, that would be the hope. But um, I think at the moment it's not much more than hope. So, so you I, I think at the, at the moment, I don't have any like, uh, direct implications or something. Uh, you mentioned that computing the strength is currently impossible, but are there known tools to give a lower bound on the strength? Um, so there is this thing uh, of looking at the singular locus. If the singular locus of your polynomial is very small, then the, the strength has to be pretty big. But with that, you cannot get better than number of variables divided by two. Um, 
And then uh, I did that one more, uh, something with ideals of regular sequences. It was very hard, like an easy to check is not, not done. Okay. Is there any kind of uniqueness statement about the decomposition <laughs> or up to some operations or like, possible ways you can decompose it to show that the strength is a certain number of the polynomial? Um, so I'm not completely sure. I think like, so this thing with linear forms, the slicing is a bit easier. I think pretty sure there, um, if you look at the span of the linear forms, that should be pretty much unique um, for strength itself. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. All right. Thank you very much.